In this video, I'm going to take you on a journey that starts with this picture of the B-25 invader we are building and concluded in an awesome napalm tank. As you can see, the tank on the picture looks rather different from what we have provided with the kit. I did not have such tank in the spares or in my other kits, so I decided to leave the plane without the tanks. Here is where Elegu stepped in and offered me their Mars 3 printer, which comes in 4K resolution. Having this printer will allow me to build my own Nepal tank. More details and links to their Amazon pages I will leave in the description of this video. So after doing some research, anecdotal evidence suggested that these tanks come from P61 and they probably have the 300 gallon capacity. I found some P61 blueprints and loaded them in Fusion 360. First I resized the blueprint so it is proportionally accurate to the kit using the cord profile and measuring the kit itself. Having the tank outlines I created a sketch of half the tank assuming it is symmetrical. Then using the revolve function of Fusion 360 I created the basic shape of the part. I used another piece from the blueprint, this time to create the outline of half of the mounting fairing. After extruding the face downwards, I used the mirror function to create the other symmetrical side of this object. Also, I cut away a portion at the top to account for the 6.5 degrees of the hydro angle on the wings and another portion to account for the curvature. All of that to possibly get a better fit. Next comes the flange that connects the two halves in the real tank. And then one bolt head representation that shows on both sides and will be replicated along the flange in a matter of seconds using the array function. Next up I will create a couple of openings in the pylon. I have no good view of those so they will remain a guesstimate of what is going on in reality. The final detail on the tank will be the fuel port which also houses the ignition fuse, or at least this is what I think. Another detail that I did were the gun barrels for the turrets because I destroyed the kit parts trying to hold them out. Moving on, in the Cheetobox slicing software, here we can place our parts on the build plate, support and slice them into layers according to our preferences. I also hold the details for a few reasons and then added a mesh for strength. The software can also estimate the price of your print based on the price of the resin that you use and the volume of the print. Of course, it doesn't take into account the resin lost in cleanup or the failed parts, but a set of Edward tanks cost about $14 on their site and that's before shipping, so, so not too bad in terms of cost I think. Using the Elegu Mars 3 is pretty straightforward. After you go through the initial setup of the printer, all you have to do is pour the resin in the tub, put the USB stick with your design in and hit the play button then the printer will do its magic. If you are interested in buying a resin 3D printer, don't hesitate and visit Elegu using the links in the description. If you haven't thought about having a printer, just think about all the cool stuff that you can produce and then visit Elegu to purchase your machine. I personally love mine. Cleaning up and curing the printed parts is a process that seems a bit intimidating but once you establish a setup, it all becomes much smoother experience. I will do a video on that when I am sure that I know what I am doing. For the napalm tanks, I used 50 micron layer height. This is far from the capabilities of the printer, but it takes significantly longer to print at 10 microns, so I chose to do some sanding instead. Removing the supports is not hard at all but attention has to be paid in order to prevent damage. I personally prefer to clip the supports from the part first and then remove them from the raft to clear the access to the rest of the supports. 
despite the 50 micron layer height, the sanding is not that much at all. Maybe 20 minutes for a tank. Mainly because I had to be careful not to obliterate the fasteners on the flange. Of course, I was wet sanding to reduce the health risks going along with raising dust. And also I was wearing a mask. After a couple of surface primer layers, the part is looking like something that might have come from a professional aftermarket company. All the details I designed are very visible and if I manage to overcome my own inabilities in this new adventure, I can only imagine the awesome details that will come out of this printer. And now something that I find oddly fascinating. This is how a part looks inside when hollowed and with the lattice in place. Looks cool, doesn't it? What does not look very cool are those failed prints. But if failure every now and then is the price for success, I will gladly play that. And on that note, I want to thank you for watching this video and until next time, happy modeling fellas.